Good morning, guys. It is Wednesday, April 10th, 2024. This is Bath Row Business, and apparently inflation's a problem again. Um, this isn't surprising, right? We've talked about this on this channel for a while now that uh, we thought inflation was going to be going up again. Um, you don't really need to watch this channel to know that. You just need to go shopping. Um, and inflation is up once again. Uh, so CPI came out today, and I know people say, well, CPI isn't the technical indicator. Uh, PCE is. Yeah, CPI, I think, is a bigger weight because even though um, the Fed doesn't look at it the same way, I think it's more important to the individual consumer because PCI looks at the uh, the underlying structures of the economy, whereas CPI, uh, sorry, PCE looks at the underlying structures of the economy, production costs, etc. CPI looks at how much you're spending out of pocket. And that's really how we feel inflation is. How much are we spending in the store? So uh, it's not good. Inflation is up 3.5% uh, uh, year to year, so on a 12-month scale, up 0.4% uh, for the month. Uh, but then it gets a little bit crazier because if you exclude food and energy, core CPI is actually even higher at 3.8%. So we're talking almost 4% inflation right now in the market. Um, that's bad. That's really bad. This is why if you, if you watch my channel, I talk about this all the time. Uh, not only do I not think a rate cut is coming anytime this year, it's just not in the data. I, I think we're more likely to get a rise in interest rates than we are a cut. I don't think that's going to happen because I don't think Jerome Powell has the stomach for it. But that's what should be happening uh, with numbers like this coming out. And even if they weren't, even if uh, the current PCE and CPI data was stagnant, but it was still above that 2.83% mark, he should be raising interest rates because that's the market telling him, like, look, you only took a half measure. The uh, in inflation rate is still high. You need to raise interest rates higher. Because even if you say uh, CPI isn't a, uh, a good technical indicator of inflation, PCE is still at 2.8%. So PCE has been consistently at 2.8% and not falling. So that gives you an idea of the fact that they're not taking full measures. Uh, and it's funny because yesterday there was still a story in the news that uh, somebody at uh, Goldman Sachs said, oh, we're, we're going to get up to three rate cuts this year at uh, one and a half, uh, three uh, quarter, uh, three half basis point cuts for 1.5% uh, reduction in interest rates. Like, where are you getting that information? That's like absolutely ridiculous. But the fact that they're saying that means that they're the ones that need it most, right? Big banks, big corporations, hedge funds, they're the ones that need interest rates to be low. Individual consumers don't. Individual consumers need prices to be low, and you lower these prices by raising interest rates. I don't think he's going to do it. I don't think he's going to raise any further, but that's what needs to happen. Um, at the very least, there can't be any cuts, not with this uh, level of inflation. It's pretty bad. That is very bad. We're multiple years into this, and it's still not on target. It's still not even pointed in the right direction. We've seen a reversal of direction. Uh, so that's all I'm going to say on inflation. I think that those numbers speak for themselves. Um, I will mention gold again. Uh, yesterday, gold was at uh, 2370 numbers. Right now, it's at uh, 2350s, which is interesting because um, even though inflation is going up, gold is actually dropping in price. That's that's interesting. I guess that's maybe because uh, the market is reacting to the fact that rates are not going to be cut. Um, crypto, uh, Bitcoin is abo below 70,000. Again, it's at 67,000. Again, very strange with these high inflation numbers, uh, the Dow going down. You would think that these numbers would be up. I'm a little surprised by that. So there's a lot happening in um, the semiconductor and smart chips. So yesterday, Intel unveiled a new AI chip that's made to compete with NVIDIA. So it's called the Gaudi 3. And it's everything you can want from an AI chip. It's cheaper, faster, more efficient. Uh, it can even fit into existing uh, mother, some existing motherboard structures, I should say. The slotting is very similar. So um, it can deploy AI models. It's been tested on uh, uh, metas, I should say. AI models, it's working well. It's already got commitments from Dell, uh, HP, and Supermicro. Um, so there's a lot of buzz about this. Uh, why this is interesting, the, the, the thing I found most interesting about this is just a year ago we reported that Intel is like dead because they have just been left in the dust by NVIDIA, by AMD, uh, TSMC, like all these companies have just left NVIDIA in the dust. And then a year later they already have uh, a smart chip available, right, an AI chip available. 
Why I find this interesting is because when you look at some of the literature out there, it talks about how complicated these chips are and how long it takes to develop them and manufacture them, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. And so that's why I thought that Intel was dead because I thought, well, you can't ramp up production like that. It's like, uh, uh, like this was an analogy I heard online. Just because uh, one woman takes nine months to make a baby doesn't mean that nine women will each take a month to make a baby, right? There's certain processes that can't be rushed. Um, and yet here we are a year later and Intel went from zero to 60 and they're already hitting the market in Q3 of this year with commitments for purchase. So it makes me think that these chips are actually much easier to build than we, uh, we talk, we think, and we talk about, which also makes me think how silly some of these embargoes and tariffs are with China, where we say things like, oh, we won't sell them our chips yet they're going to build those chips on their own and probably make them cheaper and then they're just going to come here and infiltrate our market. Uh, maybe we should be selling chips to China because clearly it's going to happen one way or another. We might as well profit from it. So just that, that that's my two cents. That's what really took me back by this story more than anything else was that Intel already had a chip. Um, from everything I had heard that this takes forever, I did not expect things to move that quickly. I thought it was going to be two or three years before there was even, you know, development of something like this. Because from everything I heard, they weren't even in development stage for some of this stuff. But I guess it's easier than people say. Uh, also, TSMC uh, is uh, had a monster quarter last year. I'm sorry, a monster year. They were up 34% year on year. So they are killing it with AI as well. Uh, ironically, NVIDIA, NVIDIA has entered some correction territory. Their stock is down about 10% from all-time highs. So there's actually a lot happening in this field, in this tech field right now with hardware. Uh, last story I'm going to talk about because I'm already late for work. i got to be out the door in 10 minutes and I still need a shower. So uh, Delta had amazing quarterly profits, uh, massive growth as well. I use that as a metric of how healthy the economy is. Um, if the economy is healthy, people are traveling. If the economy is unhealthy, they're not going to be spending money on travel. So that's just my two cents. That's pretty much it. That's all the stories I got for the day. I'll see you guys tomorrow morning. Hope you have a productive day.